So today there was a question from Viveka Chudamani. Sri Shankaracharya in the Viveka Chudamani tells the importance of human birth. It is very, very difficult to get a human birth. And then he uses the word called Pumstam. In human birth, to get a male body is difficult. That's what is the translation, traditional translation by people who don't, who, uh, in, when they translate to English. So the question here comes, sir. First is difficult to get human birth. Second is difficult to get a male body. Third is too difficult to get a birth in a Brahmin family. Fourth is a difficulty to get what we call as a desire for liberation. Mumukshatva. Right? And fifth is even if you get desire for Mumukshatva to get the right guru, right master is difficult. Sri Shankaracharya says this chain, this many things, these are these things, one by one after the other. To get it, a person should have done good karma in millions of lifetimes, not one lifetime. It's a cumulative good karma which can lead to that. So many things are understandable here. There is a, there is a question asked, is enlightenment or liberation only for women, men? Because Shankaraji words, words use the card Pumstva or men. Then Vipra means Brahmana. Vipra means Brahmana. So these, these scriptures have to be understood in the proper context. In Vedas and Upanishads, in Puranas, we see many, many enlightened women sages. So there's no question of women not being eligible for mukti. Then why did Shankaracharya use the word pumstva, which means masculine? See, he used the word pumstva. Any Sanskrit word has to be understood in the three contexts. One is called rudartha, which means a common man's or transactional meaning. Yogartha means inner meaning. And then Gudartha means a real meaning. Okay. In the common language of people, Umstva means man. So people can come back and say women are not eligible for Mukti. But that's not the way to understand the scriptures. Rudartha Godartha, Yogartha. Then we have, then if women are not eligible for liberation, then many rushis, women rushis, women saints of India are not enlightened, which is false. So then our understanding of the Pumstva has to be done at the Rudartha level and at the Yogartha level. Let us take the Rudartha level. Pumstva means man. So if you take the person, a man, to get a masculine man body is difficult. Why did Shankaraja say that? In general, in the ancient time, Vedic time, men and women had a very good opportunity for learning Vedas. Vedic knowledge was common. But subsequently, the system of education deteriorated. Women didn't have an opportunity to get education as good as men. Because of the education system. Now, for studying of Vedanta in earlier days, the only way was stop. Okay. The only way was Somebody has to leave his house, become a monk, and stay, undertake the study of Vedanta. To become a monk is the preliminary requirement to become a sannyasi, to become a sannyasi, what you call Vividisha sannyasi, and undertake the study of Vedanta. 
that was the requirement obviously it was a challenge for those days for the women and education system was also poor sometime in the middle ages earlier it was good so shankaraja says a man getting a man's body is beneficial because a man has a much more flexibility in the society at that point of time that doesn't mean that exclude the women okay now that is a low root artha we have to take the yoga artha any me any word has to be taken with the yoga artha kumstva means the masculine quality not a man it applies to the mind not to the body now what is the masculine quality masculine quality here applies to the courage courage to enquire into the reality the masculinity is also applicable to war yuddha bhumi or what we call as uh, fighting and all but in spirituality masculinity is always about enquiry spirit of enquiry enquiring into reality ability to face life with equanimity which is actually called shama dama titi sha upardi shraddha samadana and the seeking of truth so the masculine quality a man can have a woman can have similarly a man can have a feminine quality also stritva so shankaraja is giving importance to umstva the masculine quality not man in the yoga artha the desire to courageously enquire into the truth is called masculine quality so here the gender doesn't come into picture if you look at the yoga artha so in vedas it's also said the women can have the quality of a man then they are called man only sati stri is called purusha stri means women sati stri means the right understanding sati is reverse stands for right understanding right thinking or right thinking to in spiritual terms a woman is also a man so when when atma is genderless atma is not a man not a woman why would anybody discourage women into enlightenment so that's where our understanding of the context of the world either yurudartha or yogartha is important so next comes the question of the scripture itself the scriptures in sanatan dharma are three levels first level is called shruti upanishad second level is called smriti and third level is called prakarana grantha shruti means revelation all upanishads vedas come under category of shruti there is no correction or no amendment is possible in shrutis because it's a original truth so bag uh, mandukya upanishad brahmanik upanishad all these upanishad fall into this category of shruti shruti is the truth the revelation to the rishis is expressed as truth and it is not made by human mind it's not manushya krata it's called apaurusheya that means human mind has not played a role in shruti who speaks the shruti the truth is spoken through the human body by ishwara the universal consciousness that's why it's called shruti through a enlightened being the words spoken are not individual or personal universal truth are spoken that's called apaurusheya who speaks the ishwara the cosmic consciousness speaks that's why it's called shruti it's apaurusheya it's not a human mind has not worked there so there's no amendment is possible no changes are possible shruti is our reference upanishads the next category comes smriti smriti is 
a human mind or avatar takes the shruti and gives a interpretation based on the context of the time dwapar yuga or kali yuga on that context the interpretation of how to interpret how to use how to apply shruti on our day to day living is called smriti application shruti is the truth smriti is the application bhagavad gita comes under the category of smriti because it's spoken by bhagwan shri krishna who is considered as a embodied human being he took the form of human being and he interpreted every word of bhagavad gita is nothing but a interpretation of shruti for arjuna war war field battle field how to apply shruti in our day to day life is called smriti are we clear any time sometimes smritis are available for long period of time sometimes are available for short period of time so now you have to understand a divine origination scripture has no reference to your day to day functioning for example if a scripture says you have to wear a dress you have to wear a, this particular dress you should not wear this particular dress then the time and space has come into picture because one dress which is familiar at one point of time will not be applicable to other point of time the scripture statements are not for a community or a caste it's for universal so in that context shutis or upanishads they they are not for any religion or any or any community they are universal truths just like scientific laws are not for a community not for a, a religion it's universal the spiritual truths are universal in nature that's called shruti so gravitation force is this in bangalore gravitation force is that in bangalore but gravitation force is same the constant is same it's a universal truth similarly spiritual truths are universal truths they're same those who follow universal truth circle followers of sanatana dharma universal truths okay so now shruti is belong to universal truths smriti is belong to application of universal truths to your day to day life so smriti is can have a context sensitive information means for the time and space or smriti may have may not have context sensitive information also there are some smritis which are applicable to some point of time based on their situation but the truth itself is not attached there in the shruti the truth is how to apply it is only discovered the application will change from let's say dwapara yoga to kali yoga may change that application part that's why smritis are kept separate from the shrutis shrutis are unquestionable universal truths smritis can be interpreted based on the situation and circumstance of that particular time that's why it's called smriti for example manusmriti was there applicable to certain point of time now that will be interpreted that can be interpreted today today circumstance smritis the flexibility of the interpretation is there but not there's no interpretation about the truth interpretation only application there is again possible right shrutis are there smritis are there then what shankaraja road vivek chalamani is neither shruti nor smriti it is called prakarana grantha it's a basic learner's text to understand shruti and smriti it's not in ordinary category of shruti or smriti it is a text for understanding shruti and smriti it's like a basic foundation text so now in vivek chalamani shankaraja says pumstam miss masculine quality whether man has or woman has the spirit of inquiry the courage to face the truth if somebody has it's very rare first rareness is human birth second rareness is masculine quality in a rude artha or common man meaning it's a man in yoga artha essential meaning it's a masculine quality of spirit of enquiry whether man has or woman has so that's the upanishad vedas say sati stri the woman who have the mask women have the right and sati means right understanding right understanding are none other than men so it's not about the body it is about the mind okay then vipra vipra means in traditional understanding vipra means somebody who has 
well versed in vedic scripture uh, or well written uh, shastras okay so the vipra word itself somebody who is evolved who has a deeper understanding of the universal truths whether he knows the scriptures or not he has evolved human being is called vipra okay in the yoga artha in the rudra artha vipra means a brahmin who has studied scriptures so the scriptures or prakarna grantha has to be understood at the two levels of meaning what is your rudra artha is common man's living yoga artha deeper living and good artha is the spiritual meaning so in good artha vipra means atma in good artha stri means atma okay atma alone can be is be called by different names in good artha the self okay so shankaracharya in a sense he might have told what was their circumstance at that time the men have more ability to go to become a monk but in the deeper meaning i think he has understood he has communicated punstva means masculine quality of inquiry spirit of inquiry courage to face the truth so that way i don't see any uh, bias in teaching so then next comes uh, shruti is universal truth smriti is application of truth then we comes the next comes the uh, prakarna grantha so now prakarna grantha will change from time to time a teacher can give teacher can tell depending on the student context teacher can explain now whether it's veda upanishads or shruti or smriti or prakarna grantha without the guidance of a proper realized master the meanings can be misinterpreted to take a human birth is difficult to have a masculinity is different to have a evolved evolution is different to have a courage to uh, to have a desire to enlightenment is different and finally most important is to have the right satpurusha savasa a enlightened beings contacts difficult and all this happen without the right master right teaching we can misinterpret and wrongly interpret the spiritual truths so now coming i have described the sanatan or architecture of scriptures shruti smriti and prakarna grantha and beauty of sanatan dharma <coughs> look at here shruti is universal truth you cannot touch it smriti is application of truth we can change from time to time application can change but truth will not change prakarna grantha is explanation of truths now application explanation of truths in a different after 15 years or 50 20 years at the truth may have to be explained in different way so prakarna grantha you can interpret in a way to explain the truths but interpretation requires a wisdom that's why a realized master is required so now that is not so this architecture is not there in scriptures of other religions now we have to understand dharma is not religion dharma is the natural law universal truth is from that natural law flows that's called dharma which is natural to all human beings it's called sanatan dharma timeless principle timeless values is called sanatan dharma now from time to time different part of the world different religions they take sanatan dharma and customize it okay the truth is customized and then they call it as a religion religion is not dharma religion is customized truth for a society is the distinction clear when the truth is customized it's not called dharma it's called mata man means opinion opinion of a founder sanatan dharma has no founder like science has no founder science has many scientists who have discovered the truth similarly sanatan dharma many rishis are there there is no one founder there is no founder for sanatan dharma sanatan dharma is a is not a religion in that sense it's a universal truth it's like science spiritual science yeah upanishads upanishads are they are speaking of sanatan principles values 
So that is applicable. Is application is called dharma. Application day to day life is dharma. So now dharma and religion we have to understand clearly. Dharma is universal values which will not change from one community, one country to one to one set of people. It's universal. Even animals have a dharma. Dharma is applicable to animals also. But mata is a religion. Mata is the opinion of one of the founders. Religions of the world have a founder. Sanatan Dharma or Hinduism has no founder. Because science has no founder. Science has many scientists. Sanatan Dharma or Hinduism has many rishis or spiritual scientists. Founder, 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 founder. There's no religion. Hinduism? Hinduism is not a religion. Hinduism is a way of life. Sanatan Dharma. Hinduism is not a religion in that sense. Hinduism is a way of life based on Sanatan Dharma principle. Okay, now we have to understand Sanatan Dharma is a spiritual science. It's well structured. There's a truth called Upanishad. There's an application called Spriti. And there's an understanding called Prakarna. Whereas there are other there are some religions in the world where everything is clubbed into one. One holy book. When you club into one holy book, what will happen? The customs and traditions which are supposed to be part of the time and space become a part of the truth. Then what will happen? You cannot alter it. Over a period of time, that book becomes the reference for living also. That means your living style gets frozen in time and space or community. So Sanatana gave, Dharma gives a ability to apply the truths as the time, space, technology changes. You can apply it in your day-to-day -day life without altering the truth, without touching the truth. application and the way you apply can change. But the truth cannot be. But when you mix up the truth and the way of living, then what will happen? Your way of living gets frozen in time and space. Or maybe only locality also. Example is Karma Yoga. You are saying that can be changed. No, karma Yoga cannot be changed. How to do the Karma Yoga can change. Karma Yoga principle cannot be changed. But how do you do it can change. See, here we are, we are speaking of the way you dress, the way you interact, the way you treat people. They are all society context. At some point of time, they will have some context, some point, sometime elsewhere. That can be changed. Sanatana Dharma says you can change it. But what you cannot change is the truth. Basic principles you can apply. It. That's the Sanatana Dharma. Any questions for anybody, from anybody? I have answered all the questions. So, in Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says, Sriyo Vaishya Tata Shudra, even three Vaishya Shudra, they are also eligible for enlightenment, Mukti. So, why did Sri Krishna say Sriyo Vaishya Tata Shudra? In a societal context, the situation of the society at that time, education facility for women, three, were may not as be as good as men. So they are deprived of education of some reason. But Sri Krishna says that doesn't stop them having a formal education, doesn't stop them from mukti. They are eligible for mukti. So, in a way, he's saying any underprivileged also in that part of time is also eligible for mukti or liberation. So, liberation, nobody's excluded. Enlightenment, nobody is excluded. So then, Striyo Vaishya Stata Shudra has to be understood in two contexts, Rudartha and Yogartha. In Rudartha, Stri means women. Okay. In real meaning of Stri, Sattva Rajas Tamas, all living beings who are identified with Sattva Rajas Tamas, three Gunas, they are called Stris. Men also is Stri only because they are identified with the body mind complex. In the Yogartha. In the Gudartha, Stri means Bhagavan only, Brahman only. 
because everything is name of God only. Then Vaishya and Shudra. Shudra means in the societal meaning, somebody who comes from the deprived uh, community which is excluded from the society. But there's a rude artha. Real meaning of Shudra is Shujana Dravayati. One who melts with the, with in compassion for others is called Shudra. One who has no compassion is called not Shudra. He is called Asura, demon. Janma Jayate Shudraha. All people are born Shudra. There is no person who by birth Brahmana or Kshatriya or Vaisha Shudra. Then by training, they, by, by profession, they become, they take up some profession. A person who studies Vedas can become a Brahmana profession. A person who takes warrior training, he can be a Kshatriya. But by his born by Shatra, Shudra. But then he will become Vipra or Dvija when he gets Nana from the Guru. Atma Nana from the Guru. He is twice born. Now he is no longer Shudra. He becomes Brahmana. He understands. He gets the teaching of Tattva Nana, Tattva Masi and he becomes Brahmana. So Janma Jayati Shudra. By birth, everybody is Shudra. Shudra means you have to do service to everybody. You have to learn how to do service. And why to do service? Shuchana Dravayati. Somebody who melts with the suffering of the others does the service not out of compulsion, out of compassion. Compassion, compulsion, compassion is different. Then he is qualified with Shudra. Somebody doesn't melt in compassion. Somebody has no compassion, no empathy. He is not Shudra also. He is called Asura. Demon. So Vedic literature do not go by Rudartha. Go by Yogartha, deeper meaning. Understand the deeper meaning of yogic teach, Vedic teachings from a realized master. Other will be misunderstood and misinterpreted. The teachings which are sectarian, which are time specific and religion space, uh, space specific, are not universal truths. The universal truth applies to all humanity, including animals. They are called natural law. Sanatana is natural law. Any questions? Any questions from Zoom? Dr. Ripin? Uh, Guruji, <clears throat> yeah. Guruji, when we talk about uh, one holy book, it is all clubbed because of and because of that customs and traditions become part of truth. So does that mean that the Gita also is part of Smriti and not Shruti? Gita is Smriti. So, yes, it is not Shruti. It's not Shruti. It is it is Smriti. Right. So this is again one holy book which has become part of tradition. So our purpose should be to be aligned with with the with with the with the Shruti. So are we getting too much entangled with the no, customs no. and traditions? Yes. No, 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 no. Bhagavad Gita, see the pure Smriti. Bhagavad Gita is a pure Smriti. There are other Smritis which are uh, involved customs and tradition. In Bhagavad Gita, there is no customs and traditions, nothing related to a time frame is there. Bhagavad Gita is a pure understanding of scripture. There is no customs are brought in there. But there are Smritis like Manusmriti where customs are brought in. Bhagavad Gita is a pure yogic meaning, uh, uh, Yoga Shastra and Brahma Shastra. Whereas, so what you call Brahma Vidya and Yoga Shastra, it's called spiritual text. There are no, there's no importance given to customs and traditions. Whereas other Smritis, they give important truth and customs and traditions. That way, Bhagavad Gita is a pure spiritual book. Nothing in the Bhagavad Gita is applicable to Dwapara Yuga or Satya Yuga or uh, some part of India. See, what happens in the Upanishad, the truth is told in many places. Bhagavad Gita is summarizing the truths. That's why it's Brahma Vidya and Yoga Shastra. It's not about customs and rituals. Fact, only 
okay. No, no, I, no, I didn't speak of holy book of Sanatana Dharma. I spoke of holy book of other religions. So when I spoke of holy book, when I said holy book of other religions, they are mixing up. Sanatana Dharma, we have kept a clear separation in the holy book. Yes, Guruji. Right? Mm -hmm. So when I use the word, I didn't want to name the holy books and all because it will lead to some confusion. I said holy books of religions. They are mixing up the truths with the lifestyle. Sanatan Dharma has kept it separate. And then Guruji, uh, uh, you, you mentioned that the desire for liberation is something that is very rare. But do you think that the, the desire for liberation is also a form of escapism to escape from bondages and the fears of the practical life? So here the question is, okay, 